Build Your Own Deer Factory. Brought to you by Kubota. Steve, James, this is one of the segments that I look forward to every year. You know, we're finally out here. We've, we've, we're putting some work in on this property in Woodward County, Oklahoma. But today we, go, we get to go ahead and put some trail cameras out. We're going to conduct a trail camera survey and an inventory of our herd over the next few weeks. And that's our gateway to figuring out exactly what we're working with here in terms of the herd. Exactly. Uh, trail camera surveys will tell you more about a deer herd than anything else. You, you know, two, usually we do them for two weeks. If you do them for two weeks, you gain as much information as you would gain walking around the place over a year. The most important thing for this time of the year, of course, I always preach about this every time we do it, is we're estimating recruitment for this herd. Recruitment is different from fawn crop. Fawn crop is the number of fawns that are born in the spring, but recruitment are the number of fawns that are alive the next spring that are coming yearly. So recruitment is everything. Uh, if you don't have at least 40% recruitment, you're not gonna have any mature bucks. So that's very important. And then the condition of the deer as they come out of the winter, uh, is going to tell us a lot about what we're going to face this summer. Well, I tell you what, we'll take a look at the map, kind of figure out where we want to hang some other cameras, get out in the field and get mm -hmm. some of these cameras running, and uh, we can talk about exactly how to conduct one of these trail camera surveys. Yeah, because it's very important to do it right. I want to get across to folks the proper way to do a camera survey. And I already said, we need a camera per at least one to 80 acres. Uh, we try to put them where it's legal on a, on a food source. Uh, in this case, we've got a boss buck feeder over there. And we need to have it about 12, 15 yards away. If you, if you can't legally feed, we need to put it 12, 15 yards away of a, a well-used trail or maybe some rubs or what. Depends on the time of the year. Uh, we want our camera to be two, two and a half feet off the ground. And one of the most important things, one of the pet peeves of mine, is we want to carry a compass with you and you always want to aim your camera to the north. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, I get tired of looking at sunrises and sunsets and you don't see anything when you've got those backlighted uh, deer there. So we're going to run this for two weeks, and then we're going to pull the cards in, but we need to check it every couple days. You're not going to bother your deer. Usually midday mm -hmm. like this is the best time to do it. And uh, we're, we'll, we keep, uh, we use an Excel spreadsheet. We keep our, our records, bucks, does, fawns in there and any other information we have. And if you do that, I guarantee you're gonna learn one heck of a lot about your herd as you already know. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll be crucial. That'll be, yeah. be big time for the deer. I can't wait. It's always like Christmas, isn't it? It is. So we'll see what we get here. Yeah. Well, Steve, we had the cameras out. We put eight cameras out on the property, which was very adequate. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. And, and I wanna tell you, this, this property continues to amaze me. Mm -hmm. What an incredible job you've done here. Well, thank you. Because the name of, the name of this segment is building your own deer factory, mm -hmm. okay? And you've built a deer factory, <laughs> that's you. for sure. And the cameras never lie. Yeah. So the data are, are incredible. And I thought I'd go over with you what we found out. Is first of all, when you look at the demographics of your herd, uh, it's in wonderful shape. You've got a one-to-one -one buck doe ratio. Great. You don't find that very often. No, nope, you're this right. Is, this, is, this is free range open country here. Yeah. You know? So that's great. You've got a 32% fawn crop by the cameras, okay. but those fawns don't come to the cameras with right. their mothers. Mm -hmm. So it's usually twice that. So you're probably running a 60, 70% fawn crop. Okay, good. So I'm very happy about that. The only downside is you've got uh, your yearlings are down, and you. I think you told me I that did. you had I a I noticed that last like, year. Yeah. I sure did. Well, it translates to next that, year. That's very interesting. It showed up here, too. Yeah, but next year it's going to make up for it. It will. So, yeah. And, and it, if you want to look at the age structured composition of your buck herd, I usually like to have uh, 25 plus percent of your bucks to be mature bucks. Mm -hmm. That's four and a half or older. Okay. Uh, you've got 30 something percent. Great. Your buck. So you obviously have been protecting some deer here. Yep. And it shows up in your in your sanctuary area and all that sort of thing. Yep. So you've got a great uh, junior class of immature bucks coming up. Oh yeah. This is really great. It's great information. We can move on to the total management of the property and yeah. I'm really excited well, about it. Well thanks for your time to, to do all this. Oh it's my pleasure man.